Good morning, my dear students. Have you studied what we learned last class? Okay, very good. What we studied? We studied about root system. What we studied? We studied about root system. How many types are there? Two types. What are they? Tap root system and fibrous root system. The first one is tap root system and the next one is fibrous root system. Now we are going to see about functions of the root. What we are going to see now? Functions of the root. Shall we start? The main functions of the roots are as follows. So now we are going to see what are all the functions that are done by the root. Fixing. The first one is fixing. The roots fix the plants firmly to the ground without strong root or to support a plant cannot stand straight. So what is said here? Without a root, a plant cannot stand straight. Firmly. Firmly means it supports, it is on the ground and it supports you very strongly. So here, the root fixes the plants firmly to the ground. Where it is? It is inside the ground. Without a strong root to support, a plant cannot stand straight. So if the root is weak, what happens? The plant won't stand straight. So what is said here is, the root is fixed very strongly inside the ground. That's why it supports the plant and can stand straight. Is it clear students? Very good. So the next one what we are going to go is absorption and transportation. Absorption and transportation. Soil contains many minerals and essential nutrients required for the growth of plants. The roots absorb water and other nutrients from the soil and also transport them to the stem to be distributed to the other part of the plants. So something is said here, isn't it? In this topic, absorption and transportation, what is said? Soil contains many nutrients and essential minerals, nutrients, everything. So when your mom is going to give you some love, a glass of water or a glass of milk, what should you say? This milk contains protein, whatever it is. So the same thing, the soil contains minerals and essential nutrients. So that is not only mud. What is that? There are essential minerals and nutrients which is required for the growth of the plant. So here the root absorb water and the other nutrients from the soil. So the root plays here a major role. What it plays is the water and minerals or nutrients, whatever is inside the ground, it absorbs everything. It sucks from the ground and it gives to the plant, soil and also transport them to the stem. So if the root is going to absorb the minerals and if he keeps it with him, what happens to the plant? It won't grow. So what he will do? He will transport them to the stem. So he will pass the minerals to the stem. And the stem will distribute to the other parts of plants. So when the root gives it to the stem, the stem will distribute it to the parts of the plants. So shall we again read it once again? See here, absorption and transportation. Soil contains many minerals and essential nutrients required for the growth of plants. The roots absorb water and other nutrients from the soil and also transport them to the stem to be distributed to the other parts of the plants. The next one is storage of food. The next topic is storage of food. Some plants store the excess food in the roots. Carrot, beetroot and radish are examples for plants that store food in the roots. So what is said in this paragraph students? Okay, yes, they say the excess food. If you are going to eat, what do you do? You eat some food. And if it is more than that, what do you say to your mom? Mom, it is enough for me. My tummy is full. As 
same as well, this plant is going to say that my tummy is also full. There are some excess food I prepare. So what now he is going to do? He is going to store it in the roots. Some plants store the excess food in the roots. The excess food what is prepared by the plant will be stored in the roots. Where it will be prepared? It will be prepared in the plant and it will be stored in the roots. For an example, carrot, beetroot and radish are the plants which will store the food inside their ground. Inside the ground and where it is? It is in the root. So here, plants that store food in the roots. So for example, we said carrot, beetroot and radish. These are all the plants which will store their excess food in the root. So root is also playing a major role as storing the excess food. The next topic is preventing soil erosion. What is it? Preventing soil erosion. So now we are going to see what is erosion. The removal of the fertile top layer of the soil by wind or flowing water is known as soil erosion. So they said here what is erosion. Now, if I am going to keep some mud in a pit and while I am pouring some water in it, what happens? The mud will flow away, isn't it? So the same way, if the mud or the sand which is going to flow away, what happens? All the nutrients and minerals will go with the soil. So that is called soil erosion. The nutrients and minerals which goes away from the soil is called soil erosion. Is it clear? The removal of the fertile top layer of the soil by wind or flowing water is known as soil erosion. So by wind, if the wind blows very heavy, what happens? The sand and the mud will flow away. With it, the minerals and nutrients is also flow away. So this is called soil erosion. So now we saw about soil erosion. How the root helps in it, we are going to see now. It results in the loss of important nutrients that are necessary for plants to grow. So if there is no nutrients and minerals, what happens? There is no food for the plants and the root cannot absorb it and it cannot transport it to the stem. So here what the root does is roots hold the soil together and thus prevent soil erosion. So what happens here? The root will hold the soil. It won't allow to go away. So they will hold the soil and they will hold the nutrients and minerals. That's why there won't be any soil erosion will be done. So is it clear? This, this is clear. Now shall we go out this again? Preventing soil erosion. The removal of the fertile top layer of the soil by wind or flowing water is known as soil erosion. It results in the loss of important nutrients that are necessary for plants to grow. Roots hold the soil together and thus prevent soil erosion. Is it clear students? So now functions of the root. What we learn? First we learn fixing. It will fix into the ground very strongly and it helps you to stand straight and it helps to stand straight. The next one is absorption and transportation. It absorbs the minerals and nutrients from the ground and it transports to the stem. The first part, it absorbs minerals and nutrients from the soil. The next one, transportation means it transports the things to the stem. Your fourth, third one is storage of food. So the excess food which is prepared by the plant will be stored in the root. For an example, carrot, beetroot and radish. Is it clear? The last one, preventing soil erosion. So soil erosion, the root holds the soil very tightly and they won't leave any nutrients or minerals to go away. Is it clear students? So root system is over here. So root system contains two types. Tap root system, fibrous root system. So we learned it already and now we learned about the functions of the root. Is it clear students? Good morning students. Today we are going to see about shoot system. Last class we read about 
root system. So you know that we just recap it once again. Root system is divided into two parts: taproot system and fibrous root system. So taproot system contains of primary root, secondary roots, root cap, and root hairs. Fibrous roots don't have these parts, and just they have branching roots. And we read about the functions of roots. Isn't it, students? Have you read it? Very good. So today we are going to see about shoot system. Repeat after me. Shoot system. Yes, H O O T. Shoot system. S Y S T E M. System. The shoot system of a plant grows above the ground surface. So the shoot system of a plant grows above the ground surface. The shoot system contains stem, leaves, buds, flower, and fruits. This shoot system contains of stem, leaves, buds. Flowers and fruits. So, shall we repeat it once again? What are the things you can see on the shoot system? Stem, leaves, buds, flowers, and fruits. So, now first we are going to read about stem. First, we are going to learn about stem. The stem forms the main support of the plant. So, who is the main support of the plant? The stem is the main support of a plant. The stem is the main support of a plant. It holds the plant straight. So the stem helps to hold the plant straight. If there is no stem, what happens? The plant will stand. So shall we repeat it once again? The stem forms the main support of the plant. It holds. The plant straight. There are many types of stems. So there are many types of stems. Trees have thick and strong stems. Trees have thick and strong stems. Herbs and creepers have very weak stems. Here, herbs and creepers will have very weak stem, but a tree will have a thick and strong stem. Is it clear, students? So, what is here? What is the stem? They said that stem is the main support of a plant. Stem is the main support of a plant. It holds the plant straight. And there are many types of stems. As for as for an example, tree have thick and strong stem, but herbs and creepers will have weak stem. Is it clear, students? Functions of the stem. The important functions of the stem are as follows. So now we are going to see the important functions of the stem. Functions of the stem. The first one is support. The first one is support. The stem gives a structure to a plant. A stem gives the structure to a plant. When there is no stem here, what happens to the leaves? It will grow bad at that point and it won't be looking nice. So, a stem gives a structure to a plant. The stem gives a structure to a plant and helps the plant to stand upright and helps the plant to stand upright to stand straight it helps the plants to stand straight it also bears various branches leaves fruits flowers and so on so the, the branches what they have the roots and stems the stems have various kinds of branches Leaves, fruits, flowers, and so on. So the stem bears branches, leaves, fruits, and flowers. So, so shall we repeat it once again? Support. The stem gives a structure to a plant and helps the plant to stand upright. 
it also bears various branches leaves fruits flowers and so on is it clear students so in functions of stem functions of the stem we saw support the first one is support the stem gives a structure to a plant and helps the plant to stand upright it also bears various branches leaves flowers fruits and so on we said that the stem gives them the structure and it bears various kinds of things which are branches leaves flowers fruits next one is transportation next transportation we have already learned the root observe water and nutrients from the soil so when we study the root root we learned the roots will observe nutrients and minerals from the soil the stem carries the absorbed water and nutrients to the other parts of the plant so when the root absorbs nutrients and minerals it gives it passes it to the stem so when it goes to stem stem see here the stem carries the absorbed water and nutrients to the other parts of the plant so now the stem is going to pass the nutrients and minerals to the other parts of the plants this process is called transportation this process is called transportation t r a n s p o r t a t i o n transportation is it clear students so the root absorbs water and minerals and it gives to the stem the stem passes the minerals and nutrients to the other parts of the plants the next one is food storage the next one is food storage some plants store the excess in their stem so we saw that some plants in root system we say some plants store their excess food in the root as well as here some plants store the excess food in their stem so the excess is stored in their stem for example sugar cane ginger and potato are examples for plants that store the excess food in their stem so here there are some examples given for us sugar cane see you can see here sugar cane ginger and potato are the excess food from the plant which is stored in some plants the stem grows under the ground and it stores the excess food so we can say that if this is a potato plant it is under the the potatoes are under the ground so how can it be a stem you will say that it is a root but what we have said is this kind of stem is known as tuber so in some plants the stem will be in the underground so you can see in some plants the stem grows under the ground in some plants the stem grows under the ground and they store the excess food so this kind of stems are called tuber this kind of cell stems are called tuber what they are called they are called tuber t u b e r tuber potato is a tuber so potato is a kind of tuber so these potatoes are the stem of the plant so they store excess food as potatoes is it clear shall we repeat it once again repeat after me functions of the stem repeat after me ma functions of the stem first one support the stem gives a structure to a plant and helps the plant to stand upright so a stem gives the structure to a plant and it helps to stand the plant upright it also bears various branches leaves flowers fruits so so there are more things 
branches, leaves, flowers, fruits, buds, etc. So they bear the bags, various branches, leaves, flowers, fruits. Is it clear? So what it means support? The stem gives the structure for the plant and it bears various branches, leaves, flowers, fruits and so on. The next one is transportation. The next one is transportation. We have already learned the root absorb water and nutrients from the soil. Repeat after me. We have already learned the root absorb water and nutrients from the soil. So when we study about root, we learn the root. Roots absorb water and minerals from the soil. Now, the stem carries the absorbed water and nutrients to the other parts of the plant. So, what happens here? The absorbed water and minerals which came to the stem. Now, the stem is going to carry it to the other parts of the plant. This process is called transportation. What it is called? It is called transportation. This process is called transportation. The next one is food storage. Food storage. Some plants store the excess in their stem. So some plants will store their excess in the stem, their excess food in the stem. Sugar can, ginger and potato are examples for plants that store in the, the excess food in their stem. So here, when you see in root, root, the excess food will be stored in the root. For example, carrot, beetroot, everything is there. So in stem, as same as well, the excess food is going to be stored in the stem. For example, sugar can, ginger, potatoes are the example for the excess storage in the stem. In some plants, the stem grows under the ground. Especially some plants, the stem grows under the ground and it stores the excess food and it stores the Excess food. This kind of stem is known as tuber. This kind of stem is known as tuber. Potato is a tuber. So here the stem grows under the ground. So this potato plant is called as tuber. This potato plant is called as tuber. So in functions of the stem, the first one is support. It supports the plant and it gives the structure. It bears various branches, leaves, flowers, fruits and so on. Transportation. It transports water and minerals to the other parts of the plant. And this process is called transportation food storage. Some plants, they have some extra or excess food and they store it in their stem. Sugar can, ginger and potato are the examples for this. 